You're going to love this. Okay, so we're gonna review some of the changes, including the nerfs and the buffs, though the buffs not so much. Uh, we're gonna like talk about why the card was nerfed, like positive and negative implications of the nerf, how it does affect the meta, and is it like significant enough of a change, I suppose. And then we'll just give our general opinions on the nerfs. So um, we'll start off with the skulk. <laughs> so why was it nerfed, Karakon? Um, I think it was nerfed because it's just a bit too early uh, for it to have such a strong effect. So, uh, like the difference between having scout on one or two magicka or one with the ring or two magicka is like just insane. Uh, like just like forcing your opponent to have an answer. Um, it is. Uh, it, it just means that some classes are not even good. Like, uh, how does Archer, Scout, or Warrior have an answer to a Skulk? Uh, so, I think it just decided way too many games just because it comes out too early with such a powerful effect. Um, so, I can definitely see why it got nerfed. Um, as to the nerf itself, uh, yeah, I think we will talk about this a bit later. Yeah. Um, but uh, I do agree that it had to be addressed. I think yes, yeah, Skulk probably had to be addressed. I think in like it's seen like it's a powerful engine in both Talvani and Halalu, which are the two top tier decks. But I think it was either nerf Firebloom or Firebrand, like or nerf the zero powerful zero cost or nerf Skulk, and they decided to nerf Skulk instead, which I can agree with that. I think yeah, it, yeah, it's always been a problem, hasn't it? Yeah. But... Uh, like, you, you just have to give all classes, like all colors, an answer to Skulk if you're gonna keep it that way. Because right now you just have Execute and Firebolt. Like, I don't think that is an actual uh, answer to Skulk. I think Barrowstalker is a quite good answer to Skulk. Because, like, decks that play Skulk also, either their Telvanian plays a lot of removal for your guards, or there's some kind of mid range that plays uh, uh, well, a shadow, shadow shift. shift. Yeah. Yeah. Really so Gart is Gart is not a good answer to Skull. But I think like, I've had it, many it games where Bar Stalker does answer Skull quite well. It it but it, it's 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 like what well, what like half of the time it answers Skull. Like I don't think like this is like, a good answer. Like I would be much happier if I didn't have I had to rely on Barrow Stalker. Uh, I guess so. Okay, let's talk about the positive and negative things. So I guess like the positive thing is what you said, like it prevents early snowball, and you don't really have to mulligan reactive cards. Like, like as mid range battle mage, like you don't want to keep fireball just to answer skulk. Like you want something. Yeah, imagine active. you're playing against Elvani and you like it's a conscription Elvani and you have to beat them before turn eleven, and sometimes even earlier because they have ramp as well. Uh and also you have to have a reactive card in order to answer scope so you have to have like harpy or firebolt or something uh and that gives you like a really short window like uh, when, when like uh, at the same time you don't want to you don't want them to have the scope on at the very beginning of the game but you you want to close the game so you cannot keep the reactive cards as well like what should you do yeah, I think that's quite a big issue. Like, and so then you can be more proactive against those cards. But I think, yeah, so in that way, the, the nerf is quite positive. But I think, okay, what about the negative things? I think, I don't know, I feel like in 50 card decks, Skulk wasn't too... Like, turn one Skulk wins games, but not in the, like, not completely snowballing the opponent out. Compared to like Telvani or Hulalu. Yeah, yeah, it certainly felt like it. Uh, yeah, there is a big difference. Like, uh, I think a lot of it had to, to do with the cards that you pull from Skulk. Like, you bef like in 50 cards, it's usually Curse. You, know, you rarely, rarely play like a Skulk with Firebrands or Firebolts, right? Yeah, Firebolts, uh, yeah. So it not uh, not such a strong card. Um, 
like you, for example, in Telvani, the fire bloom, it can blow out like a toe. Uh, like it's so much more powerful than just a stupid curse. Oh, yeah. uh, and Hlau has so much synergy for the charge, right? Yeah. Uh, that's uh, like even with they have so many, like, yeah, 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 you just buff it to two magical, and then you start uh, with the Oathman and uh, the supports. Um, and also, like, you have so, like, uh, or clan uh, fifth legion you have uh, the supports uh, is so many so much synergy with the firebrand so it gets a lot stronger than just a curse yeah and also like you could like it's you don't draw zero cost as much in 75 cards so you don't mind running the three zero cost like i feel like even without skulk you can run three fire blooms in Telvani, and uh, you'll be okay yeah, you don't break as often. Yeah. All right. Do you think? How do you think this will affect the meta? Uh I think more classes will become viable because uh, now they like they don't have like you you can afford not to have an answer to scope, right? Yeah. Uh, and pretty much every class now can answer a free magical scope. Uh, so I think that's a positive thing. Um, I think uh, you yeah, like the the decks that didn't play Skulk uh, now have a better matchup against uh, Telvani and uh, Lau as well. So I think that was like the to- the tier one, and I think a big part of the reason why it was tier one was Skulk. Yeah, and I think it also changes the mindset of like early game since you don't need to mulligan for a Skulk, you can just mulligan more proactively and mm. that's pretty big yeah. in the early game yeah it kind of sucked that um the nerfed some decks that weren't that powerful like the market archer that i was having so much fun playing with yeah i uh, think but, that's yeah. a pretty bad nerf and there's also like monk strike i don't think monk strike can really work without maybe it can but i feel like curse was um i don't think monk Knight was playing Man- Curses in the general sense. Like, I think maybe in some lists were, but it wasn't like Super that important. common. I don't know. But yeah. okay, goblins are going. Like goblins can't. Can goblins work with three power skull? Uh, well, they can still work, I guess, but not as powerful as before. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, that's why I feel like the your suggested two one nerf was much better than this two three nerf because like. For green, you can run Murkwater Witch or something. Yeah, Murkwater Rapid Witch. Shot, you have, Rapid uh, yeah, Rapid Shot, Sharpshooter, Curse. Uh, you have so many answers if it was just uh, one uh, HP. Yeah, I think 2 1 was much better than a 2 2. And it's still a nerf, right? You're still addressing uh, the issue, uh, but yeah, it's. Yeah, the main issue is that you need all the classes to answer this card because it's such a snowball yeah. card. Yeah, and I think t- for a two three, it's just too slow on turn three. But I could be wrong. Like, yeah, I don't see it being playable. But maybe I'm wrong. To be honest, uh, it's not that far off from the uh, free magic two two that draws a card on pilfer. <laughs> yeah, and that one is terrible. Yeah, yeah. I feel like uh, two one is def. I would like to see a 2-1 nerf rather than a 2-3 nerf. I think as a 2-3, you can even run this in, still run this in Khlalu or Telvani, but you can't run it in 50 card deck. Oh, you could still run it, but not to nearly the same success. Oh yeah, for sure. Alright, uh, so I guess we talked about Overthoughts. Do you like it? Well, I said the I, nerf? I don't oh, really I like think... it. I think the nerf is a positive thing. I think it could have been done in a better way, but I think it's a definite positive for me. Um, I'm kind of different. I like. I don't really like it as a two three. I think having decks to not answer skulk, like no early guards, just promotes even greedier decks. Yeah. And so that's what I don't like about it. Well, let me put it that way. I would prefer a, two, a free magical 2-3 than a 2 magical 2-2, two, two, is what I'm saying. Okay, yeah. I can definitely see that. Alright, let's uh, talk about... Okay. 
<laughs> conscription. So why was conscription nerfed? I think my answer is Reddit. Um, what, 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 okay, it says that there are always going to be expensive cards that are very powerful and it's important that decks have an option to close out that isn't reliant on attrition. So they really don't like the attrition way of winning games. But mm -hmm. conscription is currently a little too efficient. Um, oh yeah, but the implementation of 75 cards has lowered the cost necessary to make conscription a game winning card. <laughs> Creating a gap between the late game decks that can play and those that can't. Yeah, I I agree with their reasoning, but it's uh, like their reasoning just it, uh, it, I guess it had to be a different nerf if you wanted to fix that. Yeah, so I guess making it a twelve just making it a twelve cost fix the issue addressed. Which one? Um. It fixes some issues, uh, like sometimes like you're on a mid-range deck and they just bring out conscription too early, like an extra turn helps a lot. Yeah, I think um, one turn helps a lot for conscription. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, if, if you're on a mid-range though, uh, if you're aggro, like turn, like it's 11 magic is, yeah, like it's pretty irrelevant. Uh, mid-range can get there. If you're on control, like the... Yeah, it doesn't, matter. It doesn't matter too much. Yeah. So, uh, I definitely think it's a positive. It makes mid-range uh, more viable. Um, I think it's okay to have conscription as a win condition as well. Uh, as long as it's not, uh, like, as powerful. Yeah. You know, that it, it's just better than anything else. I feel like this card was well. Obviously, this card was most effective in Telvani, and I don't think it addresses Telvani because I think Telvani can win without conscription. Yeah, it does not address Telvani for sure. Uh, Telvani does not need conscription to win. It's just the conscription is the easiest way to win. Yeah, like they can just outdraw you mid game if they get the right draw. Yeah. Like I've played a Shrine Altar variant, and it feels like you're just. You just do conscription, but over the course of five turns, and you just still win. I think I think conscription is fine in fifty cards, though. Like this is almost not playable in fifty cards at the moment. Yeah, conscription is not very good in fifty. Yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah, even at eleven magic, it wasn't very good. Now it's just unplayable, I guess. Yeah, and like Red Run and Hlalu conscription weren't amazing decks so yeah no like yeah um so yeah so yeah i, I guess it was mostly targeted at telvani uh but it doesn't really address telvani yeah so we have to talk about like does this actually affect the meta and i think right now not really i don't think it affects the meta i think telvani conscription still tier one and the other conscript, but I guess it nerfs the other conscription decks, but they were at like tier three, anyways. Yeah, well, I think it helps a bit against Telvani conscription, like not too much, but it does help. Yeah, it does help versus Telvani, but I think you can just alter Telvani control. Mm, yeah. Like with Shrine, you don't need conscription. And you can still run a lot of two. Yeah, yeah non yeah, non ramp. Shrine is answerable though. Shrine is, shrine is answerable. If you're a control, you you can grind out a shrine. Like you can just remove it. Have you seen I need shrine and altar variant? That's it's kinda hard. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, some decks can do it. Okay, some decks can do it, but yeah. Um So do you think it's a so I think this change is good, right? But is it significant enough in terms of... It's a positive change. I don't think it's too significant, but I wouldn't say that I disagree with it, so... Yeah, yeah. so I like the nerf, but I don't think it addresses the core problem. So... So, okay, so how would you define the core problem? The core problem is Telvani, right? It's not really... Yeah, consistent. so w what is the problem of Telvani? What do you think? Well, it's just tricolor in general, just... To the dual color cards are too efficient at like removing things. Mm. 
Well, for me, the problem for Telvani is that he just does everything. You don't have a good proactive <laughs> strategy against Telvani. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he, like he, they, they have uh, answer to wars, they have answer to big guys, to small guys, they have an answer to everything. I think they need to take some of its strengths away. Yeah. Like, you take negation, like, you just remove negation from Telvani, uh, and now they don't have an answer to wards at all. Yeah, if you remove, neg remove negation from the deck, I think the deck becomes suddenly just completely balanced. Yeah, and now Daggerfall is actually amazing against Delvania. Like now, now they have to play bad cards in order to answer Daggerfall. And Negation is just too flexible. I think Negation was introduced with the idea of, okay, so only you're going to be played in Sorcerer, and that's fine. Uh, but then there was Delvania and um, Tribunal. Tribunal. Even in Tribunal, it's too strong. Yeah, like, You don't so feel bad I... playing it as a two-mana Firebolt or... Yeah, yeah. So, so actually, that was uh, I was I was expecting to see one of the nerves to be negation. Actually, I think this would affect Telvani conscription more than actually conscription. Yeah, you can't bridge the gap between like well early to late game without con uh, negation. Yeah. Like if you nerf negation. Yeah. Yeah, Telvani conscription. I still think is oppressive. It's just not like. It's the name is Conscription Telvani, but it's in reality it's just Telvani control. Even Nixox yeah. is Telvani control, not really Nixox as a win condition. Yeah. And yes, ramp, ramp is a big issue. Having his mage is really powerful. Yeah, most of the time it's even three minor, not the his mage. Mm, yeah. So okay, let's move on to uh. Path Mage. I think we touched a little bit on Path Mage. Yeah, we talked about it a bit. But um, for everyone who just joined, so Path Mage got changed from six cost to seven cost. Um, so why was it nerfed? Uh, in the patch notes it says, so Nixox Calm is a little too good and comes online a little too early by bringing Path Mage cost up to seven. We hope to slow the down deck so that it remains viable but at a lower power level. And I think it certainly does that, but the fact that it's still a <laughs> it's still a two card combo in Nick Socks. But I think the seven cost means that you can't play Path Mage for value and that it's, it's almost uh, just a combo card at this point. Yeah, I think that's a definite positive for me. Like, uh, it, it should be that way. Yeah. Mm. But um, yeah, I suppose this should be a combo card. But now, I guess it's good for future expansions too, because this thing can tutor any card in your deck if you wanted to. Like at there was this tribunal where it's only doppelgangers and iron, so you play this on eleven, and it just either gets iron or it fills your board with path mage and iron. And then it gets iron. <laughs> yeah, so it's still very powerful. Yeah. But now with the new nerf, um. So, I guess the positive is that um, nerfs Telvani in the sense that you can't use it for tempo, but the two card combo still exist. I mean, now Nick's assassin is dead, but I don't think anyone really played that but me. And yeah. you know, the houses did get hit hard. It's pretty back. And I have to ramp twice. Yeah, and it can fill your board before tutoring out Jarl. So it can d d deny a color. Oh, right. Yeah. I guess this is a pretty minor nerf for the meta. Because I don't think Path Mage sees that much play in general. But I think it was a necessary nerf. Yeah, I, I do think that was a necessary. It was definitely a design constraint as well. Yeah, just in terms of that. But I don't think it'll affect the meta too much. Like, Nixox wasn't popular. Tribunal Path Mage wasn't too popular either. And Unite and Nyx Assassin were just me. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, a lot, of, a lot of the control decks play Path Mage. Like, if you look at the list in tournaments, and pretty much every control deck plays Path Mage. Like, look at Tribunal. 
Okay, I guess there is tribunal. It's a win condition in tribunal. Yeah. Also, even control mage was playing puff mage. Oh <laughs> yeah, hack me's list rank. But yeah, I mean that died down after QuakeCon. All right, let's talk about the last nerf, Ash Berserker. Um, Ash Berserker was uh, nerfed. Let me read this. Uh, in the interest of increasing variety in the aggressive decks that are getting played, we wanted to make. T uh, okay, it's currently too easy to self-activate. It's supposed to be a card you don't have to work for, but it's 4-3 stats means that any sort of incidental buff starts drawing you a card. Um, what do you think about this nerf? I actually really like this nerf. You really like it? I don't really understand it. <laughs> uh, I don't think Narvidurker Nar was very powerful, to be honest. Uh, so, I don't know. Like, Can you tell me why you like it? I don't know. It's Okay, I don't like it. I guess the only deck it really affects is Crusader. But I think it's still viable in like Warrior Dagoth. I guess mostly because it weakens Cloudler, that's why I like it. But I don't I think if it was only a Crusader card, I would be okay with it being four three. But the fact that in Hlalu it's so good. Yeah. I don't know, like I don't think like, when I lose to Halau, it's not because of Ash Berserker. Oh, that's true, too, but you just... Like, usually when they play Ash Berserker, it's that I'll leave a couple of extra turns, but at least it's not like a Cliff Racer to the face or something, <laughs> which would be worse most of the time. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know. Like, I... I just... I, I, like, I, I play mostly mid-range decks, especially now. Um, and I don't think that Arbiter, it was good. I wouldn't say it wasn't good. Uh, I I played it usually like one or two copies, but I I just never found him to to be like the factor why I win games. It's like a win more card for me. Like you already have a board with a five uh, damage or more minion, uh, so you you're just developing something else uh, that that can generate value now. Uh, but yeah, like this is this is not usually the mid-range strategy that you should be doing. Like it's usually all develop you even stronger board, and now you have a really high tempo that your opponent cannot really uh, deal with. As a control play, well, when I play control and ladder, when I like this, like I think I'm winning, and this card comes down with like even an orc clan captain, and I'm just suddenly super far behind because mm. it's quite a like you can't protect it. Like it's quite easy to protect it in the shadow lane if you don't if your opponent doesn't have an answer. But I think like I've seen this card play in still in play and like in Dagoth or Warrior and it's still good. So that's why I think the nerf is like relevant, but I'm not sure well, if it's too relevant. But... It it still can draw for sure. I don't know if that means it's it's good, but it still can draw. Yeah, I guess but it's yeah. a 3 3, it's just not good stat lines anymore. It's just yeah, like for Magic of 3 3, like what kind of stat line is that? <laughs> like 3 3 is what? Uh, a 2 Magic of stats? But like Snow Move is a 3 3. It's okay, its stats are better than Jarl, and I think it will draw you the same cards if not more. Uh, it's on average, I don't think it's gonna draw more than a Jarl. Okay, okay. You know? And also it plays into Ice Storm. I don't know. I, I just don't like Ash Berserker, so I, I just don't understand the nerf. Like, as someone who plays uh, mostly mid-range decks who are based on red, I just never find uh, Ash Berserker to be the reason I win. Yeah, I guess as a mid-range deck, you're happy to see this come down because it's very low tempo, right? Like if your opponent yeah. plays well, the card. no, like when I'm playing, when I'm experimenting with the card, that's what I mean. Like not when I'm playing against. Well, if I'm playing against him, then yeah, I am happy to see Ash Berserker, of course. Um, but I'm talking like just having it in my hand. Okay, I guess if you play from hand, I have played this card from hand, and sometimes it just feels really bad. So I guess as control, I don't really see the negative effects of the card. And the negative implications. 
I think this was really powerful with Fervor though. Like, if Crusader drops down with Fervor, it's a 5-4. Or it was a 5-4. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Alright, uh, let's move on to the buffs, I suppose. And then we'll move on to some of the new cards, particularly Cheese and Mancer. So the buffs, um, it seemed like they want to make Exalt roleplay work. But <laughs> I don't really understand why. So let's talk about uh, Tempo Conjure. Well, I guess it's just because Exalt sees absolutely no play other than Serioni, which is absolutely broken. Uh, but yeah, they, they just wanted to to like they have this mechanic that's that sees it's absolutely unplayable. So uh, maybe they went too hard on on like balancing the magic. So they said, okay, maybe we can even tone it down with one magic and still don't be that good, uh, <laughs> but we can do it. So why not? Yeah, I I don't understand why they need to make exalt like they should buff more uh, like I don't know other cards I suppose like just why just all exalt. Mm. But anyways, I think Temple Conjure is a playable card. But like I've played it in mid range, it feels decent. But you almost always play this on five, so there's like five cost. What do you think about this buff? I suppose. The Temple Conjurer? Yeah. Uh, I don't... Well, I don't think it's that good, to be honest. Like, it's still, like, it, it still feels quite underpowered, in my opinion. I mean, yeah, it dies to Ice Storm, but, like, in a mid-mirror, this is kind of a decent card. For 5 Magicka, you summon, what, a 7-5 worth of stats? Yeah, but split Which across is... two bar yeah, bodies. Yeah, yeah. And Temple Conjure yeah. is a threat with Patriarch. Like, if the ideal curve obviously is this into Temple Patriarch, and Temple Patriarch is a 10 8, 10 8 stat line with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The ideal case with this into Patriarch is quite good. Like, it's not very. Uh, it's just a board development, so you cannot really react to the enemy board. So even from that perspective, it's not that amazing, uh, but it, it's, it's like a very strong board open for sure, if it doesn't get answer. I think, yeah. I don't know, I think this is the most relevant buff out of the three. Well, I, guess I think it's the Patriarch. The Patriarch. Yeah, yeah I think the Patriarch is the most relevant one. The Patriarch is such a powerful buff. I think this combined with Patriarch, because I've been playing Exalt, and I think the only time I've used Patriarch was on this card. And not really... Yeah, like just getting one card to generate the Exalt, that's, that's good enough tempo, right? Yeah. Just one buff, like one relevant buff is good enough. Yeah, so you're paying like 6 Magicka for a 5-5. Five, 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 five. Uh, and yeah, so we, the exalt is what typically costs that three magicka. So, yeah, so if you get one effect off, so you're playing like a three magicka. Like, I've uh, used this five, with like five. A ghost gate and it still felt okay. Mm. So, yeah, I honestly expecting Ice Storm to get a similar nerf like Drain Vitality last patch because Ice Storm is too OP. Well, I think it's not easy to play on Ice Storm, but you you can definitely have ways to play on Ice Storm. Ice Storm is balanced, and you kind of need it to come back as a control deck. Well, I do think that Ice Storm is very powerful, but I think that's a positive thing. Like you have to have those kind of powerful cards that uh, you have to be playing around. Yeah, I mean you have like Cultists to balance it out as well. And wards. It's it's easy to make awkward ice storms for your opponent. Yeah. Yeah. Alright. Okay, let's move on to well, I guess the last card we're gonna talk about. And then Merce Keeper. I mean I still think the great sword is just too slow in general. And it's only good with Patriarch, but you really find the two combo. Yeah, the main problem is that you're paying the magicka for the Grey Sword and you are not getting the effect the effect right away. So usually when you're playing a weapon, uh, you play like four or five magicka, but you actually get the stats right away. Uh, and it's still too slow. Like a great sword from hand, it's 
too slow. But actually, to play it, uh, not be able to to pay to pay the magica, not be able to get the effect of, and then have to get the effect of uh, so, so to get the benefit next turn. That's that's way too slow, man. That's way too slow. It was already slow. Yeah, and then you have to you don't get the immediate effect, and then you have to if you get the great sword value, you have to keep playing it. And I think as a mid range deck, you don't have time to develop six magic of five zero. Yeah. I guess the upside is that the Animal Skipper is a free magic of four free, which is quite good in itself. It's not amazing, but it's good. Uh, so I guess that's an upside. Yeah, that is an upside. Like I don't feel bad playing this card on three, but I don't feel good playing it on three either. Like you I guess the, the the main upside is Patriarch, right? Like you you never get the sword the sword off. But if you if you get it from Patriarch, that's that suddenly becomes amazing. Yes, I I someone Patriarch double enormous keeper and smashed my face for 16 18 damage and I just conceded. But I think <laughs> Normally, you the car combo is either too late or too rare to draw on its own. But yeah, I think the buff is kind of irrelevant, but the patriarch buff makes it better. Yeah, the patriarch is what matters. Yeah. All right, let's move on to the fun section, I suppose. So we're gonna talk about one of the, I guess, not revealed card, but. Someone found this on Reddit. So it's an archer card. Let me crop this. Um, Ashlander Punisher. It's kind of hard to see. But it's a 4 mana 5 4 dual color card, Dark Elf. Its stat line is 5 4 with Breakthrough, Pilfer, and Slay. Uh, Pilfer and Slay plus 1 plus 0. So that means you can... Well, I guess it's almost a guaranteed plus 2 buff. Yeah, yeah. On every attack. Which is quite good. Well, uh, well, it's a plus 2... It's at least plus 1 buff if you're going face. Yeah, it's at least plus 1 going if you're going face. Yeah, like, like you cannot really trade that much with it because it only has 4 HP you can maybe trade once with it at best yeah I guess so yeah uh, but yeah so do you think this card will see play? well if you're archer yes I don't think it's playable in Halalu unless you're doing slay role play but <laughs> <laughs> I think it's it's a good 5-4 draw for archer but I don't think it's insane. Well, just mostly because Archer is not super strong at the moment. Yeah, it seems like to be the December reward card. Yeah, I think uh, a lot of the reasons... Like, the main reason I think this card will see play is because Archer doesn't have a decent 4-drop. Yeah, I think it's a strong 4-drop, but just Archer does not... Or Archer or Hlalu doesn't really need this card. I think Archer needs something desperately. Yeah, Archer needs this card, but I don't... Hlau has other options for sure. <laughs> okay, what well, Dagoth play this card? Uh, oh yeah, that Dagoth can also play this Good. Um, I... Don't think so. Mm, five power roleplay. <laughs> it works out. Yeah. Uh, Maybe replace all the Ash Berserkers with Ashlanders? Uh, yeah, I guess so. I think Ash Berserker is quite necessary in Dagoth. At least that's what... Well, I don't know. I, I, I disagree. <laughs> I don't really play Dagoth, so yeah. Hmm. I think uh, I had like one Ash Berserker in my, my Dagoth list. Yeah. The, the mid-range day of that I play. I think this is just a solid card. I mean, it's one of... It fights most 5 drops. Like, it fights... Uh, Emperor's Blade, Bleak Coast Troll. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It doesn't trade unfavorably, unfavorably with any of the 5 drops, right? Yeah. 
So I think in terms of stats, it's one of the best. And its ability is quite strong. Like, you mm -hmm. can control board while gaining stats. And 4 health is pretty good as on 4. Yeah. But this yeah, so I think I think yeah. yeah, I think it will see play. Honestly, I, I think it might be even good enough for mid range archer to rise from the ashes. Yeah, hopefully. But we'll see. All right, now let's talk about cheese matter. It was revealed today. So ah, festival of I... madness. I suppose that's uh. That? I think it's mostly a tease, isn't it? Like, uh, do 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 you have some of the effects that's been happening with the cheese monster? Mm. So it's okay. First, it's a festival of madness card. So is that another expansion before Isle of Madness? Like, like, is that another mini? Ah, uh, isn't festival of madness like the daily deals that we have? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Oh, so it's just that? Yeah, um, I guess it's just that. So it's just one of the deals for the day. Yeah. So, okay, so 5 it, mana 4-4. Four, four. Imperial. At the start of the game, Cheese Master gains the ability of a random creature from Isle of Madness. Oh, so this is like huge teaser. Wait, is it today's deal? Like, a, yeah, it's just today you can get it right now. Oh, people have been already playing it and trying to That's get why. all the That's keywords. Why I've been seeing it. Okay. Like, okay. I don't know what what it does. Uh, Let's so see some far. of the effects it has done. Oh, okay, so here I'm reading CVH who said that this is. Not part of the Isle of Madness expansion, it's just a preview card to show some of the new effects. Okay, so what are some of the effects we have seen? Um, yeah. uh, it's five or six different effects. Oh, uh, yeah. There is immune to lethal, which is already in the game. So I guess they're introducing that. No, oh, immune to lethal. Yeah. Is this a new keyword? It's or not just... a keyword. It's uh, I guess it's an ability. Ah. Uh. Hmm. What other effects have you seen? Uh, oh, battle an enemy creature when she takes damage, she deals that damage to that much damage to you. How does that work? So there seems to be like a very lot of new interesting abilities coming in. Oh, okay, okay. So w when you draw it, you don't know what it's gonna do. So when you play it, you suddenly uh, it gets a summon effect. <laughs> So 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 you don't know what what is the effect gonna be until you play it, from wow. my understanding. Wow, that's pretty. That's a pretty fun card. <laughs> yeah. So so it gains its effect on someone. Uh. That's okay. Let's see what effects there is. She's um. Only one creature in this lane can attack. Yeah, I've seen that one. I wonder what kind of card is it? Is it like a 4 minus 7 7 again? Immune to Lito and Shaco can be targeted with actions. Oh, wow. I wonder what card that would be from Dow of Madness. How would you balance that? Like, how do you do something that's immune to Lito, Shaco, and actions? Uh, you. Wait. Oh no, no, you see the effect in hand. It is set at the start of the game. Uh... 
Yeah, there's also a chef roleplay deck. <laughs> we have uh, six chefs at the moment. Pilford reduce the cost of the top card by three. That's one guy. Oh wow. Whoa, that's that's so much RNG. Oh, I guess it's a bad card usually, right? Because like not Korean is a pretty bad card. Uh, yeah, but it doesn't it doesn't draw, but it just reduces its cost. Yeah, but like you could potentially get like rage or. Well, if you pilfer, yeah. Yeah. But you have to pilfer with it, so I don't think that's that powerful. Uh, yeah. Like you have. Uh, well, I you guess have, we already uh, have distiller, right? So it's like distiller. Yeah, you have distiller, you have uh, swim at night, which is even better tempo. Oh, so no, no, so not swim at night. Sail through storm, yeah, sorry. Oh, let me see the other ability. You, whoa, so there is a card with immune to lethal, immune to shackle. Your opponents can't target cheese mancer with actions. Yeah. I assume this is a 12 cost minion, right? Uh, it looks like an iron action. I hope it's something cool, like some powerful mid range tool that forces your opponent to actually have a board in order to deal with it. That would be awesome. Like that would be something that I'll play in every deck. This is anti Tilvani. <laughs> oh yeah, please. Uh, I wonder what its stat line is. It could be a really low cost minion, and you can just buff it too. It's like Mage Slayer, but crazy. Yeah. Check the cards you don't have under Cheesemancer. But that's an awesome name, Cheese Monster. <laughs> yeah, I guess we don't have Atromancer now, so we have Cheese Monster. Pill for a top card cost three less. Conscription on eight, great one. Well, technically it's Conscription on nine, and I don't think. Yeah, I think the card isn't too strong. Like first, we don't know how much the. So there was one of the Cheese Monsters, Pill for. Uh, Reduce the top card of, by three. So first is a lot of RNG. So naturally, it's not that insane because you have cards like Nakrin that can reduce the cost to zero while playing a five-five body. But that's not that insane card. And you have to pill for phase, and then you have to draw the card. So you, yeah. Oh, the abilities. Oh, uh, it's just on Reddit. So you have like here. So okay, let's talk about Cheese Mancer. Do you think Wait, this card is played? I'm I'm buying it right now. Oh. I'm buying the Cheese Mancer. Two thousand gold. Okay. Quite expensive. I guess this gold sink before the expansion. <laughs> you get seven packs with it. Oh, no, you get 11 packs with it. Uh, Cage okay. Musha, don't, don't worry, I'm pretty sure that card won't be overpowered. They're, they're not gonna let some RNG card be strong like that. And you have already Blackwood Distiller, you that can cheese Blood Magic Lord on turn 9 anyways. So yeah, don't overreact to that card. What do you think about the floating cheese though? The artwork's pretty amazing. I like cheese. <laughs> What's your favorite type of cheese? Uh I like blue cheese. Hmm. It's too strong for my taste, but yeah. Well, there are different kinds. There are strong ones, uh, creamy ones, like uh yeah, but Fuse, Mud Crab is. It's viable, but it's. I don't think it's game winning anymore. Because now it's a 1 2 instead of a 1 3. Uh, I think it's still 
strong in some decks. Yeah, I know it's strong, but I don't think it's worse than Pawnbroker, I suppose. I think bon Pawnbroker is the worst form of RNG at the moment. Yeah, Pawnbroker, some, sometimes you just cannot play against. Yeah. Well, you, yeah, like, you just have to hope they didn't get what they got. Yeah. I think Mudcrab is in a good RNG position, but Pawnbroker, no. It's, it's a little too strong. Yeah, Mudcrab can actually punish you sometimes. Yeah, Mudcrab is, like, bad for you sometimes as aggro deck. Like, giving you double drain or something, and then you just don't want to give them anything. But Pawnbroker is, like, almost always... Yeah, bad. well, once, once I was playing against a scout, and I was playing, like, an aggressive deck, and my options for Mudcrab was... Uh, World Wall, uh, and a healing potion. Oh, I God. think so. It's useless. How to give them a healing potion? <laughs> yeah, so I think Mud Crab is okay. It's no longer just good on its own. All right, I think that's it, right? That's it for the recent expansions. Oh, well, not expansion, new cards then. Yeah, yeah, we, we went through the nerfs. Yeah. All right, I guess one last thing is... I feel like that the pa balance patch, you don't really need it as a... I feel like the balance patch was trying to tone down 75 cards, but I think it affected 50 card decks and I really didn't like those but I like the changes by itself uh okay let me tell you what I like about the patch it was something like uh, we've had this meta for so much time and it's been solved and it's just like the content rot and everything and it just gets boring like after so much time of nothingness like the same thing over and over again so like any change at this point was a good change in my opinion and i was really hoping something will come so i'm really happy that decided that they they're gonna shift some things around even if it wasn't done in the best way uh, i think it could have been done a bit better but i i really happy that decided to do something yeah, I remember the, the nerfs were there, but I feel like, I don't know, like Ash Berserker hurting Crusader, I didn't like that. Like, I was playing Crusader and I think it needed Ash Berserker as, um... Oh, well, come on, Crusader doesn't like card draw, you have so many Okay, options. I guess Crusader has enough card draw, but yeah, yeah I guess it does balance Crusader, but like, I'm saying it hurts 50 cards more than 75. Like, I feel like 75 can live with these changes, but... 50 cards are really yeah hard. yeah they can still be good yeah how can you nerf tricolor without nerfing dual color just don't allow dual color in tricolor comment on the item tutor effect which one there's a isle of madness card that lets you draw an item of an item of your choice from your deck well items aren't super super powerful at the moment oh is this something from the uh, from the cheese monster yeah So, I guess the only super powerful item in the game is Dawnbreaker. Am I missing something? Oh, and it's only really powerful if you can uh, kill an undead, otherwise it's good, but yeah, not super powerful. Yeah. Well... Oh, I you... guess you can draw stolen pants with it and it's pretty broken, actually. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think uh, the item decks were uh, took a big hit with the Piercing Twilight. Oh yeah, and Memory Wraith, but Memory Wraith is no play. Yeah, so Piercing Twilight is uh, really, really strong against item decks. So I guess that's some kind of like uh, uh, redeeming... I guess the tutor item depends on the mana cost, because right now you have four sword and looter. And if you can get that card going, it's really good. But at the moment, you don't really need it. So, why would you nerf 75 card decks? There's already 75 card decks, you can barely find your duel or the card you want. It's because there's no reason to play 50 card at the moment. Like, I feel like 50 card decks 
completely lost their identity. Like, Scout, you just naturally just changed to Hawaii. Control Mage, you yeah, changed to Tribunal. Scouts. Yeah, Cru even Crusader, you just changed to Kalalu. And Yeah, fix your two magical slot, just play Kalalu. And Archer and Assassin just goes Dagoth. So, like, you give up a lot of dual color cards just to enable three color cards. And although, yes, you do lose consistency, but, like, the chance of high rolling is so much higher. And it's honestly worth it, because you can just fix the curve for it. Yeah, it does seem quite problematic. Yeah, and, then, like, the Skulk nerf, I think, in 50 cards... Yes, it was some sometimes a problem, like with warrior and everything. But if you nerfed it to two one, it would be okay. And I feel like the skulk nerf just hurt fifty cards more than seventy five. Like it's still pl the zero cost is still playable with the two three skulk in fifty cards. It's not as strong, obviously, and it's good. But yeah. Well, the problem is not the zero cost. It's usually the skulk. Yeah, but mm. like being being able to bring them out so uh, quickly without your opponent having an answer yeah, yeah exactly. having the chance to answer even so what frankie said you just play it's not as synergistic like 75 cards you just run high power cards and you just went through that way instead of just pure like not pure synergy but more synergistic yeah, so I guess that means the games are a bit less interactive now. It certainly feels that way, because you just have really powerful cards rather than synergistic cards. Yeah. And also, like, playing against 75, you don't know what to play around. I really dislike that aspect. Like, on 2, do you mulligan for 5th Legion Trainer or Skulk? And that's a pretty big deal. Or, like... A turn three, do you keep crushing blow for gambler or do you keep ex execute for daggerfall mage? Like, that's what I don't like. It's just too hard to yeah. read your opponent. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I mean, that's the reason you write one elves, right? So your opponent gets really mad about what to play around. But yeah. <laughs> but in like yeah. And when I'm playing Quanos in 75, he gets even, <laughs> even, <laughs> even more math. Yeah. yeah, the only two color cards I think are Abomination and Warrior. Yeah. Well, there is Battle Mage, this place every once in a while. Yeah, there it's Battle Mage. Time. But I feel like. Even I think Crusader can be good as well. Yeah, I've enjoyed Crusader, but I still think. Lalu is stronger. Like, you don't... You, I hate the two drops in Crusader. But there are some classes that are indeed dead. Like, Scout, I don't think anything can... Other than there the is absolutely no reason... Yeah, 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 yeah. But like, there is, like, no reason to play other uh, Scout than Abomination. Just play Telvani. Everything better. Yeah, like, Assassin. Well, I mean, Assassins don't really exist, but... Like, you just play... Yeah, Dagoth. like, why would you play Assassin? Just play Dagoth. <laughs> Oh no, Crusader is still a good deck, but like when you have Hlalu, you don't like the chance of it being stronger is better. Yeah. Show Monk tier 1. Yeah, Monk is like, I don't even know at the moment. Monk, yeah. That used to be a class. <sighs> Like, I don't like Tribunal. Well, I don't know. I play Tribunal, but I don't like the fact that you have Negation and Edict. It's so efficient. Yeah. Like, Negation in Sorcerer. Oh, yeah, they, they used to be Sorcerer. <laughs> uh, I think Sorcerer negation can is... make a comeback. It's, yeah, it could. Like, it's, it's the best answer to Telvanni. But yeah, Negation in Sorcerer and Edict in, in, edict in Spell Sword. Like, those are. Those are just not a factor, right? Like they're good, but they're not amazing uh, because the decks just 
like for example spells you have so much single target removal i think i think edict on top doesn't really change that much like you're still gonna have the best one target removal uh but when you're in 75 uh you're actually starting to struggle from one target removal and you want more uh and then there is negation which i already talked about uh like sorcerers like control sorceries with i don't think it will ever be a thing so when negation was introduced uh yeah like, no like near like, zero made a really good comment about negation like negation as a in sorcerer had an identity it's like you can't really play control right so you play it in aggro and you can decide to make it it's an efficient removal card you can use it but you can also use it as burst and yeah i think that's well yeah to unshackle yeah. yeah unshackle or like uh, what's a card like catapult oh remove a uh, guard yeah remove guard and uh the what's the form four mana five five with ward so, oh, Corrupted Shade. Yeah, and you have Corrupted Shade. So in that sense, you have a lot of synergy. But like... Yeah. And it's flexible, but it's constrained flexible, yeah, right? Yeah, that's why I said it's like skill intensive, but it's a really good card. But like in Telvani or Tribunal, it's just too good. Like as a control card. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that. Like, yeah. I think negation has become problematic. I think that's probably one of the most problematic cards right now. Like, you controlling Shadow Lane with that card is insane, or like removing wards. It's just. Even Firebolt. Like, I'm happy to play as a Firebolt. And. It's, it's too good.